This is graphene, which is a lattice of carbon atoms, and it's only one atom thick. But what is special here in this bilayer graphene is that we created this effect without magnetic field, and that we did actually with light. This doesn't look like a revolution. There's no fanfare, no launch event, just a thin, silent strip, smaller than a fingernail, doing something extraordinary. It doesn't carry electricity the way silicon does. It carries light. And it's not made from the usual metals and plastics. It's made from carbon, arranged in a honeycomb, just one atom thick. That's it. That's the breakthrough. Light flowing through graphene whispers data instead of shouting it. Cooler, faster, quieter. And it could power everything from AI supercomputers to the phone in your pocket. Nobody's watching yet, but they will. Because this changes everything. Let's find out how. The copper problem. For decades, copper was the silent champion of electronics. It ran through every chip, carried signals between transistors, and scaled alongside our hunger for speed. But that era is closing. Today's chips are no longer limited by how small we can make a transistor. They're limited by how fast we can talk between them. The copper lines that connect billions of components inside a chip are now so thin, they behave more like bottlenecks than bridges. Resistance rises. Heat builds up. Power is wasted. And what used to be instant starts to feel sluggish. Imagine racing through a city in a supercar, only to be stopped at every traffic light. That's modern copper. What's worse, the more we try to fix it by packing in more pathways, the worse it gets. The metal starts interfering with itself. Crosstalk, heat dissipation, and energy loss become daily battles in chip design. In short, copper can't keep up with what we're asking it to do. Not at this scale, not at this speed. And with AI workloads demanding insane levels of bandwidth and low latency, we've reached a breaking point. It's not just time for new material. It's time for a new medium entirely. Let's talk light. Why light wins. Unlike electrons, light doesn't slow down in narrow lanes. It doesn't generate heat when it moves, and it doesn't get tangled in the noise of its neighbors. That's why physicists and engineers have been dreaming of using light to move data, not just between buildings or servers, but inside chips themselves. Photons, the particles of light, travel at unmatched speed. More importantly, they don't need energy to keep going. Once launched, they glide effortlessly immune to the resistance that plagues copper. For computing, this changes the equation entirely. Instead of fighting with heat and delays, we get clean, high-speed signaling at the speed of light. In the lab, we've already seen optical fibers stretch across continents, carrying vast amounts of internet traffic. But shrinking that concept down to the size of a fingernail? That's the real challenge. You need materials that can bend, control, and encode light at a microscopic scale. Silicon tried. It got us partway there, but it struggles outside a narrow wavelength range. It's bulky, slow to switch, and doesn't play well when space and speed become premium. That's why researchers started asking, what if we could find a material that's faster than silicon, thinner than anything else? and able to dance with light across the entire spectrum. That's when graphene entered the conversation. Graphene, the one atom wonder. At first glance, it sounds like science fiction. A material so thin it's almost invisible, so strong it can outperform steel, so flexible that it can fold like paper, and so conductive that electrons barely notice they're moving through it. That's graphene a single sheet of carbon atoms arranged in a perfect hexagonal pattern. Flat, flawless, and astonishingly powerful. Discovered only a few decades ago, 
Graphene became an overnight sensation in science circles, but its real-world applications have taken time to mature. Why? Because working with something just one atom thick is incredibly difficult. It tears. It crumples. It reacts with almost everything. But now, after years of research, the material is finally getting a second chance, this time in the world of optics. What makes graphene exceptional isn't just its strength or thinness, it's how it handles energy. In traditional materials, electrons bump around and lose energy along the way. In graphene, they behave differently, moving like waves, almost as if they have no mass. That allows them to carry signals faster and with much less resistance. And it doesn't stop at electrons. Graphene also interacts with light in ways that silicon can't. It absorbs, modulates, and even tunes light with remarkable precision, simply by applying a small electrical charge. That's the key. It means we can build tiny optical devices, modulators, detectors, switches, using graphene, and do it on a scale and speed that silicon struggles to match. Instead of bulky circuits etched in glass, we're looking at a flat sheet of carbon acting like a complete photonic engine. One material, one atom thick, endless possibilities. And it's not coming, it's already here, quietly reshaping the future of data itself. Let's look at how this carbon sheet starts working with light. Now, first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Graphene meets light. To understand how graphene and light work together, we need to zoom in far closer than any human eye can see. Here, deep inside a chip, is where data begins to move not with electricity, but with light. To do that, the light needs to carry information. And for that, it needs to be shaped, controlled, and modulated. One of the key tools for this is called an optical modulator. Think of it as a tiny traffic signal for photons. It takes a constant beam of light and bends it, dims it, or splits it, depending on what digital data needs to be encoded. This is where graphene becomes powerful. In a classical setup, modulators are made with silicon, which works, but with limits. The switching is slow. The footprint is large, and it only handles a narrow band of light. Graphene changes the rules. It can interact with a wide range of light, from visible to infrared, and respond almost instantly when voltage is applied. By placing graphene into the arms of an interferometer, a structure that splits and recombines beams of light we can control how that light interferes. A small pulse of voltage changes how much light passes through. That pulse represents a zero or a one. And just like that, we're encoding data into photons. What makes this elegant is scale. Graphene is so thin, the modulator can be compact, many times smaller than its silicon counterpart. That's crucial for packing more data channels into a chip. And because it operates over more wavelengths, one chip can handle multiple light streams at once, each on its frequency like radio stations sharing the same air. Speed, compactness, parallelism, all in one layer of carbon. But what if we went further? What if light didn't just carry data, but processed it too? Photonic computing begins. If light can move data faster than electrons, can it also process it? The surprising answer is yes, and it starts with something fundamental, multiplication. At the heart of nearly every AI model lies a single operation, matrix multiplication. It powers language models, image recognition, recommendations, and more. Chips today perform this task billions of times per second, using transistors that flip constantly, drawing power and generating heat. But with light, there's a smarter way. Imagine a graphene-based modulator receiving a beam of light. 
Instead of encoding digital bits, it's fed with a smooth analog voltage. That voltage shifts the phase of the light, which in turn changes the light's intensity. And that change is the multiplication. Input light times applied voltage equals the result instantly. Now imagine thousands of these modulators working together. Each one handles a unique input. The light exits and hits detectors, which turn those beams into an electric current. Add them together, and you've just completed a matrix multiply accumulate operation. No transistors, no heat, no delay. And this isn't theory. Companies like Light Matter are building photonic processors based on this principle, though most still use silicon. Graphene could take it further, faster switching, more compact modulators, and compatibility with more wavelengths. It's not just a performance boost. It's a shift in how we think about computing itself, one where energy, speed, and scale move in harmony. But for this to become reality, one huge hurdle remains, manufacturing it reliably at scale. That's where the real challenge begins. From lab to fab, graphene might be a wonder material, but turning it into practical technology is anything but easy. Making a flawless sheet in the lab is impressive, but making millions of them, all consistent, all nearly perfect, is the real challenge. Modern chips demand extreme precision. Even a tiny crack or speck of contamination in graphene can wreck performance. It's like building circuits on a spider web made of diamonds, strong yet impossibly delicate. Most graphene is grown on metals like copper. But to be useful, it has to be moved onto silicon wafers without ripping or breaking. That transfer process is still fragile and unreliable. Then comes the bigger issue, compatibility. Semiconductor factories are designed for silicon. Every step, lithography, etching, and packaging is built around one material. Switching to graphene means rethinking the entire flow or carefully layering it into existing systems without breaking anything. Still, progress is happening. Companies like Black Semiconductor are building dedicated graphene fabs from scratch. Others are blending graphene with copper to ease the shift. It's not fast, it's not cheap, but it's real. And if it succeeds, this won't just boost performance. It will redefine the very architecture of computing. The shift won't be instant. Copper won't disappear tomorrow, and silicon won't give up easily. But change has already begun, quietly, in the infrastructure we rarely notice. Graphene won't debut in your phone. It'll first appear in the hidden wiring of data centers, replacing copper with silent, high-speed light. As manufacturing improves and costs fall, photonic circuits will move from labs into real-world systems. AI will feel it first, then cloud services, and eventually personal tech. By then, we won't ask if graphene is coming. We'll wonder how we ever lived without it. The future is arriving quietly. And now you see it.